Hello everyone, welcome to another interesting time with SQL. So this in this session we would be talking about date and time, all right? So let's just step into into it. Okay, so when we have let's just see some things. I want to select I want to show today's dates, okay, with SQL without typing it. So I will use, all right, select current underscore date would give me today's date. As simple as that. Now, let us see. I, I don't want to just see dates. I want to see the dates and time. So that is when I would use select current timestamp. When I run this, I'm seeing to this date, and this is the time because this is um, this is five fifty nine. This is six p.m. right now. So, so this is the date, and this is the time with the seconds. All right. Now there is another keyword that I could use, which is select now with the parentheses. So when I run this, it also shows me the date and the time. So any of this is valid to present dates. Okay. So select current dates or select current timestamp. If you want not only the dates, but with the time, then select now also gives you the timestamp. Okay. All right. So let's do a quick table definition and let's put some of these things into practice. So I would do say SQL magic command and I want to create a table let's say it's a classwork table all right so people are submitting their classwork so I'm recording their names and when it was submitted so I would just use the name of the students and this is going to be it's going to be vacha 20 right and then just the time all right so I would put let's say i could use the say submission or submitted submitted i could just go for date or i could go for timestamp all right but for this case i don't think the okay let's just go for timestamp since so i would just go for timestamp all right and then i if i run this it would go but I don't just want it to be timestamp. I want I want it to show my current timestamp because if I do this, then I will have to manually be recording the information. So I will just do a default here, okay? So in case I did not type in the time or the date, let it do that. So I would say current timestamp, all right? I could either do this or I could just put now. Since we've used current timestamp before, so let's go with now. And it says done. All right. So now I will need to just insert some records. Okay. So I would say insert into table with class work. And I not I so let me just use a shortcut. Okay. So usually I would just put name and the time right but there's no need because the time is going to without putting the time it will it will place the current time by default okay so uh, there's no need putting the name because that would be the first thing so i could just go straight into putting my values all right so i will just um do maybe today okay then maybe here it's going to be grace maybe here it's going to be max all right, so let's see. Let's, let's just put one more over here. It's going to be thinner. So when I run this, four is affected, and let's just see what we have. So I would do my SQL query, and I would say select all from classwork. When I run this, I'm seeing that. Oh, today, Grace, Max, Tina submitted at such a time. So you could see the effect of the now there, right? So if I drop this table and 
put the dates you will see that it will show only dates okay instead of dropping the table let me just copy this and create another table let's say classwork 2 all right let's call this classwork 2 and run this then i would pick up this insert statement oh i should have done that because i didn't change I didn't change it so let me drop this classwork too all right let me drop this classwork too so that i can change that it's um, timestamp data type so i will say drop table just give me drop classwork classwork too and yeah so it's dropped okay so let's change this to date all right so when we run this and insert these values and then let's see our SQL command for classwork 2. So we have select all from classwork 2. When we do this, um, oh, we didn't insert this in classwork 2. All right. So when we run this and we do this. So we'll see the information that it is just the dates, okay? Because in our definition here, we put dates and not timestamp, all right? So even though now, now gives us timestamp, but because what we declared here is a date, so it will truncate the remaining values after the dates from now and just produce the dates for us, okay? So that's what it does. So we could just, there's, there's something I want to also show us here say for example this is the submission probably we also recorded like some other days let's let's assume that i'm inserting another record okay let me just let me just do this and insert this and maybe i'm doing something like um okay let's say probably we have maybe we we have the likes of um isaac and um let's let me I, I would like to do i like to include values okay so let me put the name here and the time the time or date submitted okay submitted okay submitted all right so i would put isaac and then i just i want to give it a date like okay he submitted 2023 um 2023 um let's say maybe uh on the it could be it could be the same month and probably a different day probably he submitted or the text all right and maybe instead of grace probably we have Sharon. okay and so sharon submitted let's say 2023 and it could be a different month probably she was an early submitter and she did that the previous month and then maybe the first of the previous month okay so let's let me just discard these other these other items because i'll show something so when i run this what is going on here what's going on here what's going on here so mm -hmm. values what happened on sharon's path okay there is no comma all right so all right so when i run this and i check my table let's let me just rewrite all the table from here so i will just say select um select all from as work so so we could see that there are different dates here right so we have isaac that happened on the 10th of june others on the 13th of june and sharon first of may so i want to do something i want to i want to do some analysis here and maybe i want to say something like these people are better submit a week after or, or let's say um let's let's assume that this submission was done okay and they were meant to get their results 
a week after okay so let's say you are you you've now been told to create a table that is going to calculate the time that they should get their result or the dates they should get their result so now i would say select and i could call the name okay we call the name i call submitted now there's something i want to introduce us to and it's called interval okay interval and so interval is just it, it helps us in such a calculation with dates and it's very easy and very simple to use so i would say now i would use the uh submitted okay i would say submitted submitted plus interval okay and i would just I'll just indicate with a string like maybe one week okay then i would do from from where from our class work two when i run this it is showing me the interval which means that it's showing me one week so this column requires a name so let me give it an alias so as um we said result date right result date so now you see that i'm seeing 2023 may 13 um june 13th right so if you add seven days it's going to give you 20 right so that means this person's result is meant to be due by so so by 20th of june okay all these ones have the same submission date so they will have the same due date for their result now look at isaac it's 10 day on the 10th right of june so he, isaac should have is on the 17th the same thing with Sharon. it's meant to happen seven days after and that is on the eighth so you you could do you could do several things you could say um one year okay you could even say something like you could say three days say three days all right and it's going to do the calculation without you thinking so much about it all right, so you could look at it and just see what all you just needed to do was to add this date color plus interval and you are declaring in a string the period of interval you want to add you could you could also subtract you could say minus three days and it's going to reduce it by three days okay so it is a very powerful uh, keyword in terms of analysis with date and time so I believe you understand fully well, and it was an interesting time to, to see the power of the date and time, all right? So do not forget, we could declare our date and time in three ways, all right? We could do current dates, which would give us this. We could do current timestamp, which would give us the date and the time, including seconds. We could also do now, which is going to come with the parentheses, and it would give us the date and time and the seconds, just like... The current timestamp and as they are here you could also include them in your table definition okay so you, you could either use timestamp if you really want to see the time okay but in this case you would not put defaults now okay what you put would be defaults you use current timestamp all right so this is the only way it will show with the seconds all right but if you use if you use okay okay no not that's not what i meant so if you use default now then this should be timestamp all right if you really want to see the date and time but if you use date use date then whatever you put here will be truncated to dates all right so if you want to see your date and time then you have to change this to timestamp okay so that is all and do not forget the interval is just a sweet way of getting intervals without much um calculations there are other ways you could do to you could get your intervals but this is more like the easiest way just declare your interval and put the three days all right instead of trying to calculate submitted minus get dates three days you know just use interval and three days okay yeah so thank you very much and we'll see you in other sessions bye